Hey everyone. This video is actually a couple of days late. This was supposed to come out on Thursday the 14th, uh, but we've had such horrible wind here the last few days that it was almost impossible to be out here filming. So the reason I had chosen the 14th, if you watched my last video, is that was the one year anniversary of my ER visit last year. And I wasn't looking forward to that anniversary, so I decided instead of that being the one year anniversary of that, how about it be the start of something new? So the 14th for today is the rebirth of this channel. Now for three years, it's been called California Garden TV. And this channel has grown so far beyond California. Um, I, we have viewers from every place in the world as far as I can see. And so it was a very limiting name. And we cover so much more here than just how to grow in California. I mean, I try to give information for everybody. And that's what a lot of you have said. And so I think we probably scared off some people who thought I was just giving out information for warmer zones. So anyway, as of today or the 14th, um, the channel is now Next Level Gardening. And I named it that because so many of you wrote in last year and said, thank you so much for helping me take my garden to the next level. And it just clicked. And so here we are, and for the past few months, it said Next Level Gardening dash California Garden TV. Well, as of right now, the California Garden TV is no longer a part of the name. However, don't worry if, about getting lost because you can still search it through California Garden TV. Also, as of today or two days ago, as some of you have already seen, we have our new website up. Um, it's kind of simple right now, but it's actually a starting place because I anticipate that that website is going to be a huge um, centerpiece of all of our communication and our relationship. And I'll be kind of talking about that over the next maybe a couple months. But I do invite you to head over there, nextlevelgardening.tv, nextlevelgardening.tv, and scroll down to the bottom and uh, actually sign up for our email list. And that is going to get you you know, news and announcements before anybody else. So definitely head over there and do that. And while you're there, take a look at the top of the page at our brand new logo. I absolutely love it. It's been in the works for a while, but uh, I think it really represents not only the, uh, the look and the feel of the entire channel, but the icon behind me that everybody recognizes from this channel is now a part of our logo. So I really do love it. Let me know what you guys think. And if you're on the, the home page there, you will see the tomato hooks are in stock. We're just figuring out the shipping. And so I anticipate those will be um, available for ordering within the next two weeks. By the end of January, if not before, uh, again, sign up for the email uh, list so you'll get the first uh, knowledge of when that happens. I'll also be doing a video on it. Now that that business is out of the way, I want to give you a a garden tour, a winter garden tour. Now really, don't expect much because at this time of year, first of all, coming out of December, and pretty much all of December, I was hardly out in the garden at all. Either the weather or just being busy with the holidays and everything that, everything that was coming up to this date of getting everything ready for the channel. So, um, I kept up with the vegetable beds, the rest of everything, you know, the tropicals kind of go into their off period, which you will see. Um, and so what I'm going to do is have this be part one of the tour because I've got a lot of cleanup to do. It looks like a hurricane came through here, which the last three days it was almost like. But over the next few days, I'm going to clean up everything and then I'm going to do a part two which will allow you to see how some things are done. A lot of you have been asking about the bougainvillea that we have. Wait till you see it. It's a monster. It looks like an octopus taking over the yard. Um, I will be showing how to prune one of those if you have one. Uh, and then I'll be showing you the vegetables. The vegetables are coming along nicely. They, things, things do grow slower here in the winter, especially because my garden has more shade in the winter than some plants like. Anyway, hold your judgment. And let's go. All right. So no judging because literally this is so against me to, to do a tour when the, the garden looks this bad. But remember, 
December, January are the low times in the garden. So a lot of you are covered in snow. I'm just covered in ick. So we'll go ahead and start over in the tropicals. Not a lot to see there except a mess. And then we'll work our way around to the vegetables and I'll show you what's going on for winter in my vegetable garden. So now one thing you'll notice right away is that during the summertime, you can't really see the fence. It's covered in jungle. And I learned something. I've learned it in prior years and I still haven't fixed it. But the reason you can't see the fence in most of the places is because they're covered in cannas. And cannas are, for the most part, I mean, they are, they're, they're a rhizome. And so they, they die back in the winter, come back in the summer, and they come back strong. The problem is during four or five months, maybe eh, three or four months out of the year, it looks like this. So what I need to do, and I may not do this because we're going to move anyway, but what I should have done is covered the fence in some kind of a perennial, like over here we've got a jasmine. That's much better. And I'm actually going to label this part one of the tour and next week because I got a lot of cleanup to do this week. So next week I'll do another tour to show you what it's looked like, what it looks like after it's cleaned up. So moving back this way, um, I'm really excited about this king palm. It's actually got quite a trunk on it now. And uh, unfortunately, the goal that I had for these two king palms was to hang a hammock between them. And I don't think I'm going to live here that long. So... I'll have to plant two king palms at the next place. Back here is the oldest plant in the garden, which is the philodendron. It's about 60, 70 years old. And then as we pan around, you can see that it's pretty much either the variegated ginger, which is evergreen until it blooms. Uh, the cannas, again, are all gone. These were about 15 feet tall. Now, one of my favorite plants, and I've covered this uh, in several videos, is my polka dot plant. And it actually um, starts to put these little flower spikes on during the winter and even sooner. So they definitely need to be cut back. But the great thing about them here is I can cut them back to the ground. And I'll put a link to the video on these that I did because you can grow these from year to year from cuttings. I just leave them in the ground and then cut them back to the ground about now. And then they will put on a whole flush of growth that will last the rest of this year. So in the same video, I covered the coleus. And again, here it is evergreen or a perennial. They will be cut back as well to the ground and uh, give me a whole nother year of growth. So back here, you can see the banana trees and they got thrashed with all the windstorms. The last three days we've had wind. Um, it's been beautiful temperature wise. It's been in the eighties uh, today, yesterday, tomorrow. But a lot of times in December in Southern California, with the warm weather in the winter comes the wind. So they've definitely taken a hit. One of them actually bloomed. And so that one has to be cut off at the ground. And then the other ones, I'll just take the dead leaves off and they'll start putting out again in probably March. Now my bloodleaf and Brugmansia are a far cry from what they were a few months ago. I posted on Instagram, got a ton of response and everyone loves these two plants. And again, they are, well, that's a tree here in our climate. In colder climates, you're going to have to take it in during the winter, and it probably won't get that big unless you have a really huge container. The blood leaf, though, just like the other two we talked about, can be taken, cut, cuttings can be taken in the fall, wintered over, and then planted out uh, in the spring after all danger of frost is passed. But here, we just chop it back, and it'll come right back. Now, speaking of things that need to be chopped, this bougainvillea. It is huge. It usually, I do it about three times a year. I chop it back. So definitely stay tuned for the after video because you're gonna wanna see that, especially if you have one of these and wanna know how to take care of it. But you can see right here, I mean, these branches are going halfway across the lawn. Now, one of the worst things that can happen to a gardener that has a pond is a leak in the pond and I'm afraid that's what we have. Um, a couple weeks ago, I noticed that the, the water level started going down and down and down. And typically when that happens, you've got a leak near one of the waterfalls or the streams or the filter, and that was the case. And so I'm not really sure where it is. So I've got the water going down to whatever level it stops at, and then I'll know at least where to start looking for the leak. I had to do it in the other pond before, and it's, it's, it's a pain, but like I said, I've got my work cut out for me the next few weeks. Now these ginger, there's two kinds of ginger right here. You can see the white ginger 
um, actually is still blooming. Now this, there's three, there's a ginger right there. Emily just pointed out there's three gingers because the orange chicken is ginger as well. <laughs> orange chicken. Oh, I know it's for dinner. But anyway, um, the, this white ginger typically blooms in September, October. Uh, for some reason, it's blooming now. That ginger, once it blooms, you cut it off at the ground. and it, it, Or if it doesn't bloom, like the ones on the other side, you cut it back anyway in the winter. And it'll put out new, and then hopefully they will bloom. This ginger here, this tall ginger, is red ginger, torch ginger. And it takes a couple years for it to bloom. And so you just let it go. It's evergreen here at least. And then once it blooms, then that would be cut off as well. Now, as far as the bog is concerned, uh, a lot of cannas. So again, there's nothing there. I do have papyrus and the water chestnuts, which are, I don't know how to harvest them. I got to look that up. I cut them back because they were starting to fall all over. So there's a bunch of little sprigs down there and they did spread. So I'm assume, assuming underneath the soil, we have water chestnuts, but I got to check and see how to harvest those. And I'll bring you along when I do that. That should be interesting. So in the containers now, we're moving on to the vegetables. I have some daffodils that are actually coming up from last year. So that's cool. Um, and this is my cilantro uh, seedlings. I had some plants in here. I cut them back. Cilantro doesn't last very long here. Anytime there's a little bit of heat at all, which can happen in the winter, it's happening right now. They just go to seed and they're done. So I have a whole new slew of them in here. I've got uh, this container right here that's got some lettuce that is, some of it's been harvested, some of it has not yet. Over here, I've got my irises that, if you remember, we planted the bearded iris. Um, and so they're all, they've all got green on them. And so once I have the flower bed ready in the front yard, they will be going out there. I'm not gonna be uh, growing them in these containers. So here are my peppers that we are overwintering. Now, some of them don't know that it's winter. They still have buds on them. And I think I'm probably gonna pick these buds off because these are gonna be planted back in the bed. And so I want them to focus on roots. When, if these flowers were to develop fruit on them, uh, at the time that they were starting to, you know, really put on their fruit, it'd be time to plant them back into the beds. And I, at that time, I don't want the plant to be focusing on fruit development. I want it to be focusing on roots and getting established again in the beds for the new year. Then it can put on all the flowers it wants to. Another job to be done very soon is to take all of the leaves off of these apple trees. In warm winter climates like this, uh, apple trees don't know to lose their leaves. And if you don't remove their leaves for them, it can cause uh, problems with bacteria and disease for the emerging leaves that will be happening within just the next few weeks. So this is one of the first jobs I have to do uh, probably this weekend or next. The strawberries in the rain gutter this year did an awesome job. I was really impressed. Um, you do need drip in them though because they will dry out really fast if you don't. They just need a little bit of a cleanup, but there's already new growth being put on them. And uh, I'm excited to see what they'll do for their second year because each year strawberries get better for about three years. Okay, so I finally bit the bullet and took out the tomato plants. They were still producing, uh, and they probably would just produce all winter, especially maybe on the colder nights that we have late January, early February. That's kind of our coldest. When there, If there's gonna be a frost, it's typically then. I could have just thrown some plastic or a sheet over them and they would have been fine. They would have kept producing. Uh, the problem with them is they were kind of tasteless. They tasted like grocery store tomatoes. And at that point, I was done. I think my longest uh, vine, because of the hooks, was 17 feet long. Amazing. So I took down the hooks and the tomatoes, got them in the compost. I put all of the uh, bamboo canes up and I planted three rows of peas underneath. And you can see here, they're already coming up. And we've got King Tut, Lincoln, and Sugar Snap. Now in these three wash tubs, I've got different kinds of lettuces. I've got romaine, I've got leaf, and I've got some uh, Japanese red mustard. If you guys remember the video we did on planting onions, the onions are up. And uh, again, we start them here in a warm winter climate in the fall. You guys in cooler winter climates in, you know, usually the short day, uh, I'm sorry, the long day up north 
or way down south in the southern hemisphere you will plant them in the spring but right now they're just starting out here and then they will um, be harvested probably sometime june or july i think my onions typically grow slower here because i don't get a lot of sun in this garden especially in the winter time and so onions they really like a lot of sun something that will do well though without a lot of sun are the brassicas and my brassicas are really really doing great so you can see I've got two full beds of brassicas here and um, I've got cabbage along the front. It's a slower grower. And then I've got cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and then a full bed of broccoli. And if we go over here and get a closer look, you can see I've already got broccoli heads and cauliflower. In this bed, I've got some of my uh, root crops that I just planted this past week, carrots and beets, as well as some um, Swiss chard that's left over from summer. And actually, summertime Swiss chard will grow. It's a lot more, uh, it gets a lot more disease and pests. And then if you keep it growing, just keep it alive, cut it back to the ground in the fall. Um, if you have a mild winter climate, this is the best time of year for it. It has virtually no pests. It's totally green. It's awesome. Okay, so now I'm going to take you out into the front yard and show you where we are going to be doing our edible landscaping bed. It's where I had all my San Marzano tomatoes. In fact, they're still out there. They're just laying on the ground because I actually took the uh, the wood that it was made out of and put these two, these three posts here to hold up all of the lights instead of all the teepees because I'm going to have most of my teepee stuff out front. So let's head out there. Okay, now this is a mess too. We've been doing some work in the kitchen, got a new cooktop and stuff. See the old ones over here, the boxes, pallets. Don't pay any attention to that. And in the wind, we have to lay Noah's basketball hoop down because the wind will blow it over. So it's there as well. But you can see all of the San Marzano tomatoes down here. And, um, what? There's still some. And then over here was the bed where we had the three sisters, which I won't be doing ever again. Never say never, though. Um, so I'm going to bring, the, have this bed all the way down, be this deep, and I'm going to be starting to draw up plans just in the next few weeks um, so I know that I can go out and start getting seeds and whatever I need. I already have most of the seeds, but some of the ornamentals that I need to plant. I already know what vegetables I think I'm going to put here, but we need to figure out the ornamentals. All right, so again, that was part one of the garden tour. I'm going to work the next few days, get everything cleaned up and ready, and then I'll do part two next week and show you what a transformation there has been. Have a great weekend, guys. I'll see you next week.